Hello everyone and welcome to week 9 of the college football season. This week the FIU Golden Panthers host the Iowa State Cyclones in another Big 12 matchup. This week should go down easy I would think as FIU 3-0 in conference and 6-0 overall take on a very overall lowly rated Iowa State team. However this year they have been proving otherwise to Big 12 competition. Iowa State has sat at the bottom of Big 12 standings for the past couple years. Can they dethrone the newbies and make themselves be feared once again? Or will FIU once again show their dominance in their new competition? And here... We go, as this game is off, Silas Spearman back to return, and he will get a couple good blocks in front of him. He gets caught up there and only can get a 21-yard return up to about the 23-yard line. Dominique Rimes is, of course, the man to watch this week with six catches for 101 yards last week. They start in the single back formation and a draw for FIU as Shane Coleman takes it up for a gain of seven. This offense will run a lot, I'm sure, today, hoping to really lower Hillard's interception ratio. As right there, they throw and find Dominique Rimes, first pass of the day and first reception of the day for Rimes. 15 yards on that one. As now into the I formation for FIU. Hillard, will he pass against the question? They like to keep the ground game going, and it will be Shane Coleman once again as he's able to get 12 yards, just enough for another FIU first down here. Looks like they're having an easy time finding running room early on. And if that can continue, then we can expect a lot more running from them. As no, it is Yakeem Griner this time on the passing game. Wide open for 42 yards and a touchdown, Golden Panthers. As FIU has now found their passing game, it looks like. Hopefully this stays as the Cyclones run the ball themselves here with nearly getting 12 yards on that run. Sam Richardson, not known too much for having a giant arm, but he can sling as he gets hit there on this pass by one and only. I'm sorry, I suddenly got caught off there, and now Hillard once again on offense here. And what a play there by Hillard to Loader. He was able to find Loader when it looked like no one was open. I honestly expected a pick there. Let's watch this in replay. As no one is open here, and Hillard on the run just throws it up, and there is TJ Loader wide open. Getting himself open for his quarterback. That is how a young wide receiver needs to play. Is now back to Shane Coleman on the ground here on second and six. That's a gain of five and will set them up for an easy third and one. Well, I shouldn't say easy. I take that back. As now FIU set up in the full house and there is my favorite play in the playbook. That fullback run. Got to give the fullback some love. As now into the shotgun for FIU on 2nd and 12 here. Hillard runs out of time and is sacked. That is the first sack today for either team. Darian Cotton there on that one. And that will move this ball back to 3rd and 23. That is a big loss for the Golden Panthers. Now once again back into the shotgun. No one in the backfield to help Hillard. He's got all his wideouts out. And he finds DeAndre Jasper. We rarely ever talk about him in the receiving game. But 27 yards. His first reception in a couple games. I'm not even sure how many it's been. But 27 yards for the wide receiver and kick returner. Which will get a first down and take us to the end of the first quarter. FIU up 7 to nothing, But Iowa State is fighting. FIU now went back into the single back here to start this second quarter. Shane Coleman getting a nice six-yard gain there. Good way to start the quarter if you ask me. So I'm up with a very short third down. And this ball goes to Ty Mayo who's able to fight his way for a gain of three and another FIU first down. FIU once again now set up in the shotgun here. 
Hillard taking the snap. He's looking to the side, and that is tipped away. Could have been intercepted, nearly was by Iowa State. Not the smartest play there for Hillard. As once again, I got caught off earlier, it was Denzel Perrine that got the big hit on Sam Richardson. As there we see Alex Leslie there on the short pass and a first down for Iowa State. That is their first first down of, I'm sorry, their second first down of the game. As Richardson misses his pass there and it will be a third and ten play here. This is a big play for Iowa State as they haven't made much happen so far. And a nice play indeed. Willie Sims keeping hit both feet in bounds, I will say. And that is NFL legal for another Cyclone first down. Neely finds his way open as Richardson finds him. And that is another first down for the Cyclones. Iowa State really starting to drive here with this up-tempo no-huddle offense. Richardson somehow finds his way around, but Denzel Perrine this time gets a sack and not just a hurry. As that one will go down in the books as him getting to the quarterback fully. He just brings him down, fighting out of two, two blockers, the left tackle as well as Neely, the running back. And now after fighting out of, after taking that sack, Iowa State has to deal with a long second down and the ball comes loose from another sack on Richardson and that is a fumble turnover recovered by FIU. God, that's a lot to say. This time the sack comes from the linebacker Reggie Carter, outside linebacker who plays a lot like a blitzing defensive end. Reggie Carter's a big guy and he's able to make the play there. And you know what surprises me more? He's on middle linebackers. Loader gets the reception there for 10 and makes it a short third down once again for FIU. As now the handoff to Shane Coleman who finds running room. He's trying to get to the edge. Not able to get outside enough, but a gain of 11 will be plenty for FIU to get a first down. As now once again in the I formation, the run to Coleman. Coleman making one move there, trying to make the man miss. Doesn't, but gets eight yards in the process. Another nice run from Shane Coleman. Now back into the shotgun here on second and sec. Second and two as Loader takes the jet sweep. We saw a touchdown the last time they ran this, but this time he gets caught from behind for only a 13-yard gain, but that will put them deep in the red zone with a first down. Hillard now taking the snap. He finds Dominique Rimes, but all he can get is a first down there. Can't get into the end zone. They are at the two-yard line, which must mean, yes, this patented goal line formation. Touchdown, TJ Loader. FIU adds another seven points, well, six at this point, onto the board. FIU is up 17 to nothing going into halftime. As now we are back in the third quarter here as Richardson going to work early there getting Quan West involved here. They need some big plays to be made here. Does Iowa State now being down three scores at this point as now Richardson off the option finding a lot of running room. He takes that all the way up to the 39 of FIU. A big run there for Iowa State not only as a confidence boost but for playmaking ability is Quan West is once again the receiver same route he ran last time another first down for Iowa State they are driving and fast so now this is a run up the gut with the draw to Neely he gains a, he gets a gain of seven there another good gain this has been a very nice drive for Iowa State and I think the defense for FIU is starting to tire so Neely is able to push through for a gain of three and another Iowa State first down this defense really needs to wake up and start making the plays they need made. They were making them early, but not anymore as Richardson given time. But it runs out as he is hit. Look like once again Denzel Perrine, but I couldn't tell with how many jerseys there were around him. And instead of taking the field goal, Iowa State is going for it all here on fourth. And that will be a sack of Sam Richardson. I'm not exactly sure who got him. We'll see here again. It looks like it's Perrine, and I'm not sure Brewster was there. Either one could have been given the sack. As now the offense for FIU is back on the field as 
Hiller throws it up. Dominique grinds, spinning to catch that. And then sadly gets forced out of bounds there after powering through the cornerback. What a play. Can we see it again? Yes, we are already. But right there, the nice spin catch and power through the corner should have been a touchdown. But hell, we'll take the big play anyways. Hillard now drops back a lot. He play fakes there, and he gets nothing. He is taken down again today. Tom Alexander is the man who gets him this time. But he tried to play fake. He tried to fake it there. Was unable to. They didn't buy it, and Hillard went down hard. As now into the into the shotgun again. As now loaders the target. They don't get much there. Only a gain of five, and they will take a field goal. As FIU now up twenty to nothing, they ha Iowa State has to stop thinking about this run. As Neely gains six there, and another run here to Neely as he gets a nice gain on only needing a couple inches. Iowa State has to start thinking about more pass-happy offense as the third down is nearly complete. The third quarter, I'm sorry, is nearly complete here. And that one is nearly picked off as Iowa State does take a shot deep but fails at it. They're on fourth. I'm sorry, on third down. As now Hillard takes a shot deep and that is picked off by not surprise. They actually went for a deep ball there and that is going to be taken deep into FIU territory and by deep into FIU territory I mean nearly inside the 10 as that was a play that didn't need to be made there they could have simply just ran the ball and kept running the clock out or at least ran more time off the clock there was no need to pass the ball now now Richardson and company for Iowa State out trying to add points to the board so they may be able to make a comeback. A nice play there. A nice catch by P.J. Harris on the reception. That puts them at second and inches at the three-yard line. The handoff there. No, it's an option, and Richardson takes it in for himself. Touchdown, Iowa State. And this game may have just gotten a little bit more interesting. FIU now back on offense. They're passing again, which makes no sense, but Dominique Rhymes able to get the catch on that. Another 24 yards for the man. And that will take us to the end of the third as Iowa State now, sa now has seven points, but down to FIU's 20. The fourth quarter has begun here, and FIU is once again passing, and this is how it ends up. FIU passing the ball ends in another turnover. This is not needed. That is two interceptions, the first two of the game for E.J. Hillard, both late in the game where now it's just a two-score deficit. This is not what they need to happen. As Richardson now going to his targets, Neely as number one guy, gets a nine-yard reception there. They like to check down a lot, it looks like, here for this Iowa State team and their high-octane off, high offense. Now Richardson on the option, he gives it to Wembley, and Wembley just powers through one tackle, powers through another, and is able to get a big gain there when he should have been tackled early. As now, once again, the shotgun as we've anticipated all game, Wembley with the ball again. And he is just showing off his power pushing forward, and he gets another Iowa State first down as they are now inside the red zone. Richardson off the option, tries to get the first down, and they will give it to him. They will give him just enough for another Iowa State first down, nearly inside the 10 now. Richardson out of the shotgun looking for his man. He finds Watson, and that will put them inside the 10 at around the 6-yard line. I'm sorry, they're at the 7 there as the handoff to, St to Rob Standard goes nowhere, and that will lead to a 4th down. Now Iowa State has to take a chance here. They need points to make this game interesting. Leslie gets the ball, but falls Two yards short of a first down. That has to hurt. He was open, had a chance, gets the ball from his quarterback, and falls two yards short of giving them a chance to get in the end zone. And here comes the smart play by FIU, just running the ball. Coleman there on that one with another nice run to get them a first down. He's had a good day, averaging six yards per carry. 
It's now another handoff to Shane Coleman going around the left side this time. Finds a hole and enough for 11 yards and another first down. One more first down is all they need here. Third and 12. They're going for the pass. I don't know why. And once again, another interception. This game is all but over at this point, but that was not needed. Just run the ball whether you get the first down or not. Let your dominant defense handle everything. That pass was not needed for FIU. As now Iowa State comes back on the field, they know they cannot win this by now. As P.J. Harris once again gets a nice catch there and is able to make something very nice out of it. Iowa State has to know they can't win at this point and are just playing for pride here. But Richardson really trying to lead his team down the field as he finds Willie Sims again, another first down for Iowa State. As now FIU's defense merely just playing to play, I would think, as Perrine almost gets to him, but that is an interception. FIU Cameron Melton with the pick to shut this game out. Thank God the defense comes up. Personally, I don't have any problem with late scores, but hell, I didn't want to see Iowa State get a late touchdown, as that will be the game right there. Reggie Carter is your player of the game for his sack, force fumble, and his number of tackles today, but it was one hell of a game. Cameron Melton, though, seals it away with the pick in the end zone. And that pick never really should have needed to happen. It didn't need to happen, but nonetheless, FIE once again comes away with a Big Ten victory. This one, much more like a scrimmage game, nothing much to really talk about if you ask me. Iowa State, though, played their hearts out. You gotta give it to those players. They played tough. They got three picks off of EJ Hillard on stupid plays by Coach Wolf. Personally, that's just my thought, but they played their hearts out and made plays when they needed to. Now FIU will have to deal with going to Oklahoma State University, but now they're ranked number 9 in the nation. Can they take out the high-powered Cowboys? That we'll find out next week.